We know that 99% of the energy in the incident photon beam will can be converted into heat rather than x-rays, so it comes as no surprise that high heat is the number one cause of x-ray tube failure. Basically, this is what your anode feels like every time it is bombarded by the incident photon beam. There are many ways for an x-ray tube to fail, so I'm going to discuss five of the most common reasons. They are cathode filament burnout, slow leaks, anode cracking or pitting, mechanical damage, and electron arcing. Cathode filament burnout is the eventual breaking of the cathode filament wire. Every time you make an exposure, you're heating the filament, which causes tungsten on the filament to evaporate. Eventually, this causes the filament to break. If you were to make an exposure using 1MA, you're heating the filament to about 3300 degrees Fahrenheit. But if you make an exposure at 5MA, you're heating the filament to about 3600 degrees Fahrenheit. This 300 degree difference between 1MA and 5MA causes the filament to burn out 21 times faster. High heat is the number one cause of cathode filament burnout. When I talk about slow leaks, I'm not talking about the slow vegetable. I'm talking about physical damage or degradation of the tube or its surrounding hardware, which causes gas to slowly leak into the x-ray tube. All of the components inside the glass enclosure of the x-ray tube are sealed under extremely high vacuum. If the x-ray tube enclosure is compromised, such as a sealing become fatigued and breaking down due to high heat, then that vacuum seal will break, allowing gas to come into the x-ray tube. Anode cracking or pitting causes total tube failure. There are a number of reasons why an anode will crack or pit. One reason is improper warming up of the x-ray tube. When making an exposure using 1MA, the filament is heated to about 3300 degrees Fahrenheit. That high heat bombarding a cold anode will cause that anode to crack or pit. Another reason the anode might crack or pit is due to long exposures at high MA. A rotating anode can reach temperatures of over 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That prolonged heat can cause microcracking, which increases tungsten target evaporation onto the glass. Mechanical damage encompasses many manufacturing defects, physical damage or normal wear and tear to the x-ray tube or its surroundings. One of the more common failures is ball bearing damage in the anode. High temperature and high speed will reduce bearing life the most. Finally, electron arcing is the most common cause of tube failure. As tungsten is evaporated off the anode and cathode due to high heat, it either remains as a gas inside the tube or is deposited on the glass enclosure. At some point, the tungsten gas buildup will cause the incident electron beam to arc from the cathode and strike the glass enclosure, causing immediate tube failure. Since heat is the main culprit for x-ray tube failure, and 99% of the incident photon beam gets converted into heat, how does the tube cool itself? The tube cools itself by dissipating heat through thermal radiation, conduction, and convection. Thermal radiation is the process where heat energy is radiated through the air by means of infrared electromagnetic radiation. This is the most common way heat is dissipated in our x-ray tubes. Infrared heat comes off the anode target and heats the glass enclosure. Thermal conduction moves heat through direct contact. For example, heat from the anode target can travel through the anode neck, into the rotor, and out through the stator. The last way to remove heat from the x-ray tube is through thermal convection. Thermal convection is moving heat through air or liquid. For example, the heat that traveled to the stator will dissipate into the insulating oil of the metal housing.